Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today is another exciting episode in how to UV map using the tools in Maya. Last episode, we went over the theories of UV mapping as well as planar mapping. In this episode, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the process of UV mapping and also go over a little bit more complicated model. All right, so there are four steps that you want to follow when you are UV mapping. The first one is projection. That's what I showed you earlier, which is uh, we're going to project using a planar map, a spherical, a cylindrical, and I'll later on talk about automatic. So we, first of all, project it so the UVs are laid out. And we also want to make sure they do not overlap. The second part is cutting, which we're going to go over today, which is you want to make sure that you're, you can cut and sew pieces together so that you have control over your seams and UVs. The third thing you want to do is unfold. Now this gets a little bit more complicated when we're starting to do uh, organic objects, but you want to make sure that there are no distortions in your UVs. And finally, packing. Packing means that we're going to take all of our UVs that we just completed and we're going to pack it all into the zero to one space as tightly as possible. Those are the four steps. And today we're going to start with projection. Now, so far we've only learned one tool and that was planar mapping. But with planar mapping, we can use to UV map complicated items such as a cube or a box. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the default cube works really well, but the issue is, let's say for example, I wanna do something beyond a cube. Let's say I wanna do maybe something like this, which looks like a chest. So anything that's box-like, you notice that my one and my V are backwards. Um, so obviously this is upside down here and everything's a little bit stretched and I'm not too happy with this. That means that if I try to texture this, it's gonna be a mess. So what I wanna do is UV map this. Now, basically when I take a look at an object, I just try to figure out what is the closest shape I have when it comes to these three things, cylindrical, planar, or, sphere or spherical. So what I wanna do is select and just use these as individual planes. So I'm gonna select these two planes, top and bottom, I'm going to be UVs, planar mapping options. I'm going to use Y axis because it's going up and down and then apply. Okay. And then move this aside. Now these are overlapping. How do I know? Because you can see that it's got a specific color. I'm going to go to face, pick this one and then move it up. So right away, you're going to notice that I have two pieces, but one is red. Red is bad. Red means that if I try to put any type of text in here, it's going to be backwards. And I'm telling you as a texture artist, you never want that. You do not want unpredictable resu results. You don't want to flip anything in your textures. It's just wasting too much time to do that. So we need to flip it. That's where our UV toolkit is going to come in. So we're going to go to transform. I'm going to scroll down and there's one right here. We just click flip. And now it's blue and that means that everything is great. Okay, perfect. All right, let's do the front. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna select this one. Whoops. And which one do you think it is? We have Y, X, or Z. If you said Z, that is correct. Let's go ahead and go to UVs, planar mapping options. We're gonna go to Z, apply. And we're going to do the same thing. Notice that I'm moving it outside of the zero to one space. The reason why is because I'm actually projecting multiple pieces and then I'm going to sew them together. So right now I just want to make sure that there is no distortion and then I can put it back together. So let's grab this face and I move it down. Here's another one. Flip. And there we go. Now we have four pieces. They're separated. But the good news is, is that once I sew them together, they're not going to be warped. Okay, got one more here and here. So this one is going to be, let's see, X, apply, same story, move. Probably move some more, but we'll go ahead and do this. Again, it's red, flip, and maybe move this down. Yay. Okay. So the first step to UV mapping is project. So now we've projected. The second thing for UV mapping is avoiding as many seams as possible. What's a seam? Well, notice that my borders are not attached anymore. 
So if I want to texture something, I want to make sure that the texture continues on instead of me trying to fight the file and trying to get them to blend together. It takes way too much work. But if I sew the seams together, it'll be really easy to texture. Let me demonstrate to you what I mean. I'm going to close this, turn this off, and I'm going to assign a new material. And for now, I'm just going to use a basic Lambert because we're not really texturing. This is just an example. Lambert, I have to move this over. Notice that there's all of this information's here. So I'm going to go ahead and edit, delete by type history. There we go. Lambert. Click on this little color, this little file, this little folder. And let's plop this in here and press the number six on your keyboard so you can see it. Okay. So first of all, it's a terrible texture because you got this grass here. But the point is, is that when I take a look at this file and I take a look at this texture, this is actually one piece. But because of the way the UV maps are done, I would have to go into Photoshop and move this around to make sure this applies. So that would take a lot of work. You can also see how, how it's divided. You can see immediately that the texture actually stops here and then another texture comes in. So you're trying to avoid all of that. And you can do that by sewing your pieces. So I'm going to turn off the texture, which is this, and turn this back on. Boop. Okay. So now we just need to sew these together. We're going to go and select an edge. And notice that when I select one edge, so for example, this one, these two get selected. That's because they share an edge. So let's go to the UV toolkit and I'm going to collapse the transform and go to cut and sew. And there's this fun, fancy button called stitch together. Click on that and you'll see that now they are, whoops, there it is. Let me double click. Now they are together. Notice that the seams work really great together. Let's take a look at what it looks like with a texture. Ta-da, it's magic. So notice that with the texture, I no longer have to fight Photoshop anymore. I can just fix the UVs and right away look how nice and smooth that goes. The transition is there and if I'm a texture artist, exactly what I want. I don't wanna fight the UVs, I don't wanna fight the model. It's already gonna be pretty tough because I wanna make sure that the texture process is easy, so you just sew it together and there you go. You now can just paint this over it and you won't have any issues. So let's turn this off and turn this back on. We're going to continue going down the way. Let's say I want to put this, these guys together. So I can select the edge on the model or I can just select the edge on the UVs. And then again, I'm going, I don't think I selected it. There we go. Stitch together. Ding. I'm going to do one more. Stitch together. Great. Let's take a look at that. Okay, now unfortunately there will always be a seam. So the important part is to hide the seam as best as you can. If I was a person, for example, people say, all right, if you're doing a human, make sure you just follow the seams of your clothes because that would be a perfect place to put stitching. You might wanna think about that when you're doing UVs. Okay, so notice that the transition's pretty nice over here at the bottom looks really good, over here looks really good, and then blink, it just stops right there. So we can't help it. We have to have a seam. We have no, really don't have any choice. If I try to sew this together, like for example, if I try to sew it, it will just collapse and flip UVs and all sorts of stuff. So you always will end up with a seam. You just have to make sure to hide it. So I don't think hiding it up here was a good idea. It was probably better to go down here. So I'm going to fix that. Let's see, I don't want the seam to be here. I want the seam to be down here. So I am going to cut, which separates it, grab this seam, stitch together, and there you go. So now the seam is going to be down here, and the whole thing, it transitions really well all the way around. All right, let's go and select this. We also have these guys. We always want to make sure that we do the best that we can to combine them. So they might, like you could probably leave them by themselves, but I'm going to go ahead and bring them together. So again, if I try to stitch and sew, It'll just go ahead and place it, and then I'm gonna go to the other side and then do the same thing. There you go. Or you can right-click UVs and just select, just select all your UVs and move them and then place it into the zero to one side. Zero to one space, there you go. We have avoided as many seams as we can. So we did several steps in this one. We projected first, then we sewed them together, and then we had to cut and sew to make sure that everything fits well, and then we put everything into the zero to one space. Those are the steps of UV mapping. 
And finally, don't forget to edit the lead by type history. Now, if your supervisor tells you, actually, we want the model to be like this, what does that mean? It means you have to UV map it. So make sure your model is done before you uh, UV map it, because if you make any changes, you're going to have to fix the UV maps and sometimes redo them. That's just part of the nature of the beast. Um, I've done it before. I've done it a thousand times. It will happen again, I'm sure. But uh, just remember to finish your model and then UV map. All right, that's how you UV map and texture a very simple cube or a box, or in this case, a leather something. As you can see, it's very important not to have any seams or as little seams as possible with no distortion. Now that we completed the cube, we are going to move on to the next projection, which is going to be cylindrical. We're going to be using cylindrical mapping and then spherical mapping. So those are the next two tools that we're going to go over in the next episode. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, please leave comments below. And again, if you like these videos, please like, share. Thank you again, and I will see you in the next episode of Academic Phoenix.